Welcome to Akihabara, where the only way we can describe the Japanese beer industry is pure dead brilliant. I'm Casey. <laughs> I'm Eric. I'm Dave. Yeah. Uh, so this has been something we've been <laughs> yeah, wanting to do. <laughs> <laughs> this has been something that we've been wanting to do for a long time. We have a good friend Dave here, finally. Thank you for joining us, man. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Uh, I hear we're about to drink some delicious beer. Yes. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah, we are currently in the Brew Dog Bar in Rapongi. Um, this is also thanks to Dave. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. <laughs> um, so one of the biggest things, uh, we purposely have held off on doing BrewDog for a long time now because we promised that we'd do it with Dave since they're Scottish, he's Scottish. Uh, it holds a special place in your heart. Shit, right? I forgot to wear my kilt. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably for the better way. This, <laughs> this yeah, <angle>. <laughs> We, we normally open the show with a dick joke. We didn't do it today because uh, we're in a, we're in a, a bar. So you probably could have like, seen my dick if I had my coat on. <laughs> <laughs> For this episode, we are just doing bas uh, basically their, their frontline beer. Their flagship. Their flagship, that's the word I wanted. <laughs> their flagship beer, uh, the Punk IPA. All right. All right. Oh, yeah. All right, oh, we get to drink now. Yeah, I mean, do we want to talk at all? Let's... Drink no, it let's just first. Drink. Okay, let's <laughs> drink it first. It's five so, minutes of this. So, uh, if we do a cheers, but do it in Scottish. Okay. Uh, Tell us how to do that. Slangeva. 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 Get it, don't you? Um, so, a little bit of background info on BrewDog. We don't have a, a whole ton of specifics. Uh, I, I do, because I did my homework. Well, I did too. <laughs> but I do want to. from Scotland. <laughs> yeah. In case you got that. You do that shit. <laughs> Oh, there we go. Nice. Oh, got some beats. Yeah. Um, they were started in 2007 by two guys. Do you happen to have their name? <laughs> you fucking jerk. <laughs> Mr. Reeser? It's uh, James and Martin, isn't it? Uh, I can tell you. said it before, didn't yeah. he? It's uh, on my phone. Uh, James yeah. and someone. Hang on. Yeah. Yeah. A couple of legends. Look at my phone. From Aberdeen, I believe. Martin and James, I was right. Oh, nice. good effort. Yeah. Nice. One of their main ethos is basically to just... Well, I guess their number one rule is to make other people as interested in craft beer as they are yeah. and kind of, uh, you know, infect others with that passion for the for the liquid bread. Right. Um, I feel like the company itself is like a bit of a disruptor. Like it's uh, doing something, well, they've been around for a while, but they're doing something new. And yeah. they've got outrageous, brash branding and it's really taken off as a result. Um, they don't give a fuck, they, say. they just yeah. like go hell out for everything, yeah, have come up with crazy names. Their website is something like, their, or their own description is like, you know, we're the punks behind brews and we're just motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> cool. <laughs> They're just taking the world by storm. Um, that's awesome, it's really good to see something like that coming out of Scotland and like a tiny place like Aberdeen, although it's a big city but yeah. uh, mostly renowned for heavy rain, grey skies and oil. But um, okay. and now you've got some amazing craft beer all over the world as a result. So yeah, it's cool. like cool. as of 2016, they're sitting at like 50 bars across the world. Or yeah, it's quite like a few. Yeah. Like, you know, you got tons of employees from the original two guys, and that's in the span of what, 10 years now? It's, yeah, it's about 10 years, right? That's crazy. One thing that surprised me is Japan was one of the first places they exported to. It was like back in 2008, yeah. like the second year that they were in business, they were already exporting here. So. When Yeah, when one of the first, uh, before craft beer really got big here. That was kind of, Brewdog was one of the first ones you saw. Yeah, I feel like they did pretty well to get ahead of the curve. Like, yeah. yeah. Really establish themselves quickly in Japan while that the whole scene was like taking off. And right. as a result, they've got this massive bar in the middle of Rapongi, which right, is right. pretty amazing, so. So, do you, what kind of personal experience do you have with Brewdog before coming here? Uh, to be honest, because I've they been in Japan. Uh, <laughs> I've been in Japan so long. Um, Brewdog, uh, the first time I drank it was probably in Japan. Oh wow. Uh, okay. And we have a close relationship with uh, the company that uh, represents them in Japan through the embassy. So um, yeah, I got cool. to know quite a lot of their beers through that. Okay. Uh, we used them quite often for some of our big events. Okay. Uh, they came and brought like kegs and did some of our garden parties and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, going back to the UK, like going into some of the Brewdog bars, they kind of kind of look like this actually. They're okay. pretty similar kind of setup and um, pretty cool locations. Um, yeah, as uh, as Ian was saying earlier, like um, kind of bit out of the way, kind of back streets and stuff like that. So okay. you can't necessarily find them that easy, but um, yeah, pretty cool. Cool. And just the range of beer they have to offer is amazing. Yeah. Like, yeah. Twenty taps in here. 
uh, loads of different guest beers, so it's really cool to come in and nice. try something new every time. So, all right, so you want to talk about the beer a little bit? Yeah. So, mm. I love punk, punk IPA. It's uh, it's a kind of go-to beer, I would say. Um, always pretty refreshing, uh, quite fruity. It, surprisingly light for like a 5.6 percent beer. Yeah, the same way. Easy yeah, it's to like drink. Super like, drinkable. Yeah. You can drink a lot of it, which yeah. is dangerous. <laughs> I uh, have. And, uh, yeah, I have as well. <laughs> Um, you know, it gets you to where you want to be. But yeah, um, yeah it's just always really refreshing and nice. Um, I think it does a really like. It's a belter. <laughs> Flagship is a really good. Pure uh, dead brilliant. Pure dead brilliant. <laughs> Flagship's Sorry. a really a really good word for it. But at the same time, it's also a really good. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, it's a good recruiter beer, I okay. guess, to bring you mm. into the craft beer scene because. It's one, a, like consistently, depending on whether you like certain beers or don't like certain mm. beers, it, it kind of offends no one. Right, right. But at the same time, it's a really well made beer that uh, if you're used to only lagers, it's not too offensive to jump into this. Yes. But at the same time, like, oh, I only like stouts or whatever. This yeah. is still, it's still got enough uh, character to it, personality, I guess. A lot of times with the IPAs, they, they might be incredibly hoppy, but that's their thing. They, they aim for the hop aspects. Or you might get a paler on IPA that goes for the kind of the sweet citrusy. Yeah. And this kind of has notes of both. And they're both balanced enough that, like, that's, like, that's what makes it so drinkable. Right? Like, it's, like, it's smooth. It's got a nice bitterness and a nice little bit of sweetness and citrusy uh, notes on it too. So I find it enjoyable to drink. Yeah. I drink it quite a lot. Um, <laughs> it's accessible to me quite easy <laughs> every, every Friday. So, uh, but I love the fact that I can see it everywhere in Tokyo. Yeah. yeah. And it's you in every, like it's in every stuff, store. Yeah. It's in convenience, like oh, some yeah, convenience now. Yeah. It's like. That is amazing, like to see like this company have right. so much like penetration into the market that it's in that's one of, yeah, like it's regular so stores. Difficult. That is quite groundbreaking, yeah. I would say, for like a, a British beer company to have done that um, with so many competitors. And right. you yeah. got the whole Japanese craft scene as well, so it's, it's like really impressive. We, we recently, um, I don't know if it'll be up yet or not, but we did an episode on Brooklyn Lager, and the whole way that they were able to actually penetrate the market was basically by being bought being bought by Kieran. Yeah. <laughs> it took like it took out. marrying marrying a Japanese dude's daughter basically <laughs> to like get in. <laughs> so the fact that Brewdog has been able to maintain a presence here and like build a yeah. presence being a foreign company is really impressive. Um, as always thank you for watching. Big thanks to Dave for one setting this up and two finally joining us. <laughs> thanks for having me. <laughs> Pleasure. Uh, thanks to Brewdog Rapongi for hosting us. Thanks yes. to Ian for helping us out, helping us get everything set up and actually doing a brief interview with us. Really appreciate all that. How do you say it again? Slanjava. Slanjava. Slanjava.